Shenzhen, one of the most prosperous and vibrant cities in China. In this land of opportunity, many phenomenal tech companies were born and growing up in the past decades. Big names like Tencent, world's largest video game vendor and the parent company of WeChat, the largest social media platform in China. Huawei, one of the largest smartphone makers in the world, alongside Samsung and Apple. DJI, world's largest consumer drone manufacturer. Walking on the street of the Shenzhen CBD, you will bump into white collars who are walking hurriedly, and you will see fancy cars passing by. However, if we go deeper into the city, in a neighborhood near the Shenzhen Sanhe Personnel Market, we are gonna come across a group of youths who do daily paid jobs for a living. People call them youths of Sanhe or guards of Sanhe, which appears to be a sarcastic way to address them. Unlike their peers who are working hardly in the Shenzhen CBD. Working one day and enjoy the following three days is a slogan of Gods of Sanhe, which means they would often spend one day doing daily paid jobs like waiter, construction worker, etc. And in the next three days, they will leave on a dozens of dollars that they earned for doing one day daily paid jobs. You might be wondering about how can they really enjoy their life on a dozens of dollars. Well, that's the unique magic of Sanhe. An overnight stay at an internet bar in Sanhe would cost you a couple of bucks only. Although the condition there is not very well, but who cares when you can immerse yourself in virtual world and forget about the bitterness and hardship of life? Wanna get some sleep? Another couple of bucks would get you a bed space in Sanhe. Feeling hungry? You can feed yourself by eating the famous guabi noodle, which would cost you less than one dollar in Shuangfen Noodle Shop, the cheapest restaurant in Shenzhen. Sanhe has the lowest cost of living in Shenzhen, which makes the lifestyle of working one day and enjoy the following three days possible. You may want to ask me, what if they couldn't find a daily paid job and they are running out of money? Well, if that's the case, it's time for them to enter into the mental state of Guabi, sleeping and answering the call of nature on the street, eating one meal a day until you find another daily paid job, and then repeat everything all over again. Obviously, it's a death circle that nobody can jump out of, unless you won the lottery. Well, I'm not joking here, but a lot of gods of Sanhe are actually addicted to online gambling. Some of them maybe end up in Sanhe due to huge gambling debts. They are willing to do anything, including selling their ID card for dozens of dollars to get more money into their gambling world. In order to grab the last straw, in which they believe can drag them out of the death circle. However, they either end up having more debts or involved in big troubles because their IDs may have been used for illegal business. The last straw turns out to be a beautiful trap that will push them into the abyss. Now you may want to ask me why don't they find a full-time job and live a normal life like everyone else? Well, a lot of them did. They were not born to be gods of Sanhe. They used to have dreams when they came to Shenzhen in the first place. However, they had no diploma and skills to apply high-wage jobs. They could only work in factories as unskilled labor to make a living, and. They had to work very hard, sometimes over 12 hours a day, to.
to earn hundreds of bucks more each month. After months or years of hard work, one day they realized that this was a death circle. If they wanted to get promotion, they needed to have certain skills or a college degree. But just like what I mentioned, they, as overworked, unskilled workers, had no time for self-improvement. Even if they were willing to dedicate their time to themselves, most of them were lack of qualities to change their life. Otherwise, they could have entered college when they were young. So they said. It. I don't want to live like this anymore. Then they found Sanhe, a paradise where they can work one day and enjoy the following three days. At first, they didn't see Sanhe as a long-term plan. But once they were influenced by the senior gods of Sanhe and got used to the lifestyle there, they couldn't help but sink into Sanhe eventually. It's another death circle, but with less bitterness and hardship. They don't have to get up early and work overtime in order to earn more money. They don't have to worry about how can they get married and settle down in Shenzhen, where the real estate price is soaring high. They finally realize that the most important thing in life is enjoying now. Well, guys, this is the story of Gods of Sanhe. I don't know what's your opinion on them, but、uh, to be honest with you, when I first heard of their story, I despised them a lot. I think they got what they deserved because they give up on themselves and、uh, they choose to live like that because they are lazy and、uh, had no desire to improve themselves. Now I have realized that I was too naive back then. I was viewing them from the angle of a man who was a university graduate and had a stable job. When I put myself in their shoes, I start to understand them. As I said earlier, I believe that a lot of them used to have dreams, but the reality sometimes can be extremely cruel. When they were hardly beaten by the reality. They realize that not everyone deserves to have a dream. So instead of chasing after an untouchable dream, they chose to be gods of Sanhe. So I don't think we should blame them for being gods of Sanhe. Instead, we should think about what our society can do for them. I'm not sure if you still remember the famous、um, Shuangfen Noodle Shop of Sanhe. The owner of the shop once said something. Worth to think about. Actually, these people are all evil people. They are just trying to take over him. Xi Jinping took over him. I don't know. 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 那不是这样子的，他们自己抛弃了自己。为什么你要有一个人来拯救吧？你倒去倒讨他的债，应该该我们的政府免掉吧？为什么要免掉你？那他是无家可归，你自愿拿斯拉夫自愿阿尔巴尼亚自愿，害人也是自愿嘛。我比我们还是国家的国民嘛。不要乱讲话，要上电视的。上电视我已经录起在这里，我这有录音的。我不怕。现在让你有吃有喝的，还让你打工。他这么会去，一天做事几天不做事，那能怪谁啊？打了有点问题了。所以啊，那不能怪人家。那你也要拯救他一下。这他妈的，对啊，政府也不管我。是啊，政府要管一下啦。管一下了，政府怎么管？怎么不好管？有个适当的工作，有个安排就可以了。枪毙的问题。不是没安排工作，是安排了工作又不想干了，干一两天就回来了。因为因为上面那能怎么样？还是社会上面。老板是什么样？天天拿着鞭子抽啊。哪个些老板是什么样？白眼。还是可以的。就是白眼，他们这些人，你懂不懂？不能这样说，你要是努力了，你你刻苦了，还是有人提拔你的。正宫，我想讲个你哈。我现在没赚到钱，我还是。我讲个你，人生下来每一个娃娃都是好的，都是好品种，没有哪一个娃娃不是好品种，只有你怎么培养的。对对对,对,对，你这句话说了我我。哪一个娃娃不是好品种？对对,对对，没有人没有笨的。就对，就是家庭出生的环境不同，在走上环境不同的道路。对对,对，我在这里生活十八年，还不认识人，来都是很标志的一个孩子，到了这里
变得非常懒惰。不是社会抛弃了你，他这个人我知道，我这里就是说你可以不做，又不是不让你那个，你搞一天日结了之后，你再去找个正式工啊，让自己活下来啊，层层开课，让自己活得好，层层开课，自己把自己放弃了，是啊，放弃了要有个人跟他牵一把啦。<笑>都想要人牵一把，是啊，要人牵的，就是瞎子呀！我瞎子已经走到了河中间了，无路可走，非得要有一个人走后面把他牵回来。The Chinese society is changing rapidly due to the fastest economic growth in the past decades. However, at the same time, lots of social problems have emerged, including the growing gap between the poor and the rich, and the soaring high real estate price. In mega cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen, and the culture of overwork in many industries, etc. Nowadays, not only guards of Sanhe but many college graduates, they tend to live in a low desire life. They don't buy an apartment, they don't buy a car, and they don't want to get married and have a kid. There is a specific Chinese term to describe this kind of lifestyle called. Tamping, which literally means lying down. In this time point, the Chinese government announced three-child policy in May 2021 due to the issue of aging society. However, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of young Chinese people、uh, they have given up on following regular life paths. They don't even want to have one child, including me. I know people like us cannot represent millions of Chinese youths, but I think the the three child policy will face a lot of challenge in the future, especially in mega cities like、uh, Beijing and Shanghai, where the the cost of living is very high. The good side is the Chinese government is actually doing something to prevent the situation from getting worse. For example, to restrain the real estate price hike in mega cities. By taking measures like、uh, property purchasing limitations and mortgage restrictions, and to lift people out of poverty by implementing poverty alleviation program all over China. So where would China go, and what's the future of Gaza Sanhe and a whole young generation of Chinese? I suppose nobody can tell, but to wait and see.